realize that you don't regret a heartbeat that you spent memorizing the Quran. And you find this all the hard might be Allah's way of keeping you connected to the Quran. Because you're reading it more. Because you're reading probably my A-level. The first class I went to was him. Mm. And he's a Quran teacher. Yeah. It's Al-Rahman. Allam al-Quran. The merciful. He taught the Quran. Yeah. There was a lot of low parts. Especially 15th Juz. You're doing this one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening. And once you've got that dedication, you can adapt that to your studies. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to the Hif Status Podcast, a podcast whereby we'll be unpacking the Quran journeys of young people here in London to show you that it's not impossible to learn the Quran, to memorize the Quran, to implement the Quran alongside your studies, alongside your career. You don't have to traverse over the sand dunes of Mauritania to dedicate 10 years out of your life towards memorizing the Quran. You don't have to necessarily travel over the seas to Egypt to memorize the Quran. You can memorize it here in London. Despite all the fitness that we have around us, despite all the distractions that we're faced with as youth here in London, you can do it. And it's been done and we're going to bring guests on inshallah to show that it can be done. Just before we delve into the podcast inshallah, I just wanted to say a big jazakallahu khayran to Dar al-Arqam, an institution based here in the UK, here in London, for letting us use their premise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them. They're an institution that provides free courses following the vision of Sheikh Abu Ubaid who wants to provide free courses. He doesn't want there to be any barrier to Islamic courses for anyone that perhaps is struggling financially, is struggling in terms of where they can exactly locate or access courses that provide for level one in terms of just beginning to develop fluency with the Quran, learning the Arabic alphabet, building up to level three and even going on to being able to memorize again Ijazat. And also they provide courses on public speaking, history. There's a recent one they're providing now. You can sign up to their WhatsApp um, and their Telegram page whereby they update you on the courses that they provide, but they provide many courses that are beneficial to reverts, people that have been in the deen for years, people that are looking to learn about the history of Islam. And I've personally benefited from a lot of the courses that they provided, and I'm right now still involved in some of the courses that they provide. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them abundantly. Jazakallah khair to our guest Mu'ad for coming down, inshallah, we're going to introduce him. Well, Mu'ad is 18 years old, alhamdulillah, he's completed memorization of the Qur'an. So even now, we're just going to go through essentially a conversation on his Qur'an journey, what he developed along the way, what he learned, um, the teachers that he learned under, some of the tips that he developed, tips on consistency, tips on where to get started, any rules that he encountered along the way and how to overcome those, any barriers within health from Muraja'a, for example. All of these are going to be tips that we're going to go through together, inshallah. So I'm sure the viewers at home are interested to learn a bit more about yourself, your background, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd. Firstly, Jazakallah Khair Dawood for giving me this opportunity to uh, present on this podcast. Jazakallah Khair Dawood, Barakallah Feek, Barakallah Feek. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make some benefit to the listeners. Some of the people who haven't memorized the Quran, uh, inshallah, it will be an inspiration for them to memorize and endeavor in this blessed journey. Now, in relation to myself, short insight into my life. Um, I, bought, I was born in London, lived in London, two, two Islamic schools, yeah. Al Mizan School and London's Academy. Uh, these two schools were in fact very monumental in my tahfiz journey because it was a very systematic yeah. approach that the school has uh, uh, has uh, gone along with over the last 10-15 years how long right. the school has been They're around. based in East London, right? Yeah, based in East London, based in yeah. the, what's it called, the subsidiary of East London Mosque mm-hmm. Okay, so, alhamdulillah, it's really well what age, what age were you when you approximately started like really taking the Qur'an and just delving into the Qur'an in terms of your journey? Um, because you're currently studying A levels right now. Yeah, eighteen. Sure. Yeah, coming to the end of your A levels, right? Yeah, yeah, thirteen. The wow. Tough year. Yeah, the top. Yeah. Exams coming up. Yeah, lots of stress. Alhamdulillah. When did you exactly begin your journey with the Quran? So, in the beginning, my parents, Alhamdulillah, we I came from a mm-hmm. quite um, Islamic background at my house. Alhamdulillah, my father uh, was able to recite the Quran to a substantial level, mm-hmm. and that's where my journey started at home. Sort of class, mm. sort of fact, etc., etc. Mm. But then it got to a stage where we wanted to improve both my brother and I, our sure. Quran. Sure. So our family, we went to Egypt, mm. and alongside Quran, mm. we learned Arabic, mm. which is a poem based on some of the Tajweed rules. Yeah, uh, we learned that in Egypt. It's really good for mm. Tajweed, especially beginner level, mm. um, and it's easy to memorize okay. because there's quite a few recites that mm. have recited in that way. Yeah. Um, so Alhamdulillah, that was really well. And also in Egypt, I learned five verses that. So um, five juz being how, how many pages is that? So, so that's a juz is twenty pages of the yeah, Quran. Depending on what most have most have <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Look at that too. But it's roughly what five, a sixth of the Quran, right? Yeah, mashallah. So, so sixth of the Quran was learned in Egypt. Yeah, in Egypt. Mashallah. Now I was around five to seven, so okay. quite young. Alhamdulillah, that's that's a huge endeavor. Uh, after I returned to the UK, it was that portion of my life where it was my father who taught me, 
and he taught us alongside my cousin. We were just going over the Quran mm. together. It was mainly revision, mainly revision. Mm. But then, when I was in year five, we went to Al Mizan school. Yeah. Um, I spoke briefly about that. About Al Mizan school. Year five, you were about seven years old then. Yeah, about, about seven years old. Um, and Al Mizan school was mainly dedicated towards mm. teaching the Quran mm. and memorizing it for students. Part of the curriculum. Yeah, part of the curriculum. So you've got the national curriculum, and yeah. you've also got the Dafi side of it embedded into the day. Yeah. So we had every day two hours, I believe. Um, so a portion of that was dedicated towards new lesson. Mm. So you had a new lesson where you memorize mm. maybe half a page, mm. maybe mm. less. The important thing is not about how much you memorize. Yes, for sure. It's about retaining it. So that's why the quality. Yeah, quality. So that's sure, why we had sure. two revision bits. So we had a previous, which was the mm. lesson you did yesterday, and also for revision. Sure, yeah. Revision, which is like a bit further back. Yeah. Um, so you had two cycles essentially going mm. on. And that really consolidated your revision, so you were able sure. to uh, memorize the Quran without that stress of forgetting. Because yeah, if you yeah. forgot it, yeah. what's the point? Just a bit more in terms of what's your background. So maybe some people might be watching this and thinking, you know, he's Arab, he's Arab. You know, they, of course they're gonna memorize the Quran. It's a native tongue. Are you really Arab or no? Nah, nah. A lot of people do say that I'm Arab for some reason. That's not true. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm originally from Pakistan, so I don't know Arabic. It's not my mother tongue. Mm. I learned in Egypt. However. In fact, it's a miracle in itself that non-Arabs, us yeah. non-Arabs, we can memorize the Quran, for sure, for sure. totally different language, and we can memorize it. We can say it with an Arab accent, with a melody, yes. and all from memory. So that's that's a miracle in itself in the Quran. Yeah. Yeah. And we have made the Quran easy for you to remember, so will you be mindful? But that doesn't mean we don't learn Arabic. Of course, yeah, exactly. it's very important because for sure the for Quran. Sure, for sure. It's not only about reciting; it's about mm. understanding mm. and the So the Arabic portion of it is important. However, it's a miracle in itself that we can memorize it yes. without Arabic. Yes. So, alhamdulillah, that's really mm -hmm. something that keeps you motivated. Really shows you the true purity yeah. of this religion. Yeah. How important is it for you as a person that carries the Quran or someone on that journey to pick a good teacher? I think the teacher bit is one of the most important. Throughout my journey, mm -hmm. I've always had a teacher from beginning to end. Whether it's my father, whether it's my teacher Al Mizan, or whether it's currently my Ustad, Ustad Abdullah Jamal, uh, who currently teaches me. So, what we do is we have online lessons. Uh, he's based in Egypt, alhamdulillah And we do Quran lesson every single day Even once on Jum'a it was half an hour And the reason why I think it's very important Especially dur during revision Because it prevents you from becoming lazy If you don't have a teacher Then you might say, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow mm -hmm. And then you procrastinate Then you end yeah, up not even doing it You've got someone to hold you accountable Exactly, you've got someone to hold you yes. accountable um, um, and also you can go to for advice yes. And all of the times, even though I was struggling with my A-level The first class I went to was him mm. And he's a Qur'an teacher uh, yeah. But I built that relationship with mm. him like, They're more than a Qur'an teacher yeah. They're almost like a spiritual father or exactly, spiritual exactly. parents yeah. Parents. Yeah. Even when I've had like uh, friends asking me mm. some questions That I didn't know the answer to yes. Ask my teacher, for my Qur'an teacher no. And he gave me answers from the Qur'an and Sunnah yeah. And it's not, that's why a teacher can give you more than what you asked for you're there to learn the Quran, yeah. memorize it, but also he'll give you some fawaid. He'll tell you that this ayah means this. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. a teacher will give you more than you ask for. Yeah. I think there's an uh, unfortunate stereotype yeah. with Quran teachers mm. that they're harsh mm. or they hit you or stuff like mm. that. That may happen in certain cultures, which is wrong, totally, mm. totally yes. against Islam. Yes. That's something that's not being promoted. Mm. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu mm. never hit what's he called his sons mm. or some of the younger companions. Even if you look at Surah Al-Rahman, Allah starts off with attribute of 99 attributes he could have selected. He says, Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Qur'an. The merciful, he taught the Qur'an. Yeah. Profound. Exactly. He didn't say Al-Jabbar, or he didn't say Al-Qahar, or Al-Qawi, the strong, or Al-Shadid Al-Iqab, the, the powerful, or the, you know, the, the harsh in punishment. Yeah. He taught the Qur'an. No, he said, Ar-Rahman, the merciful, Allam al-Qur'an. Yeah. The merciful taught the Qur'an, especially when you, you have to show mercy, otherwise, that's what happened with some of the youth. They were they went to certain madrasas or they went somewhere and the teachers were harsh on them. And now they're not every yeah. time they learn the Quran or they read it, they get some yeah. trauma yeah. from it. And that's something that's really bad. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, my teacher, my teacher in Egypt, he was the most kind person, mm. even on the days where he's tired, mm. uh, he had a difficult day, mm. he was ill and he mm. still took my lessons and my lesson wasn't up to the highest level. He wouldn't start degrading me or anything like that. He was still motivating. Mm. And you may argue that that made me a bit lazy or stuff. No, it didn't. Because I felt ashamed, I felt embarrassed that, look, my teacher put so much effort. Mm -hmm. So, at the very least, I should be working extra hard. And that motivated me. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, that mercy that he showed me mm -hmm. was very important mm -hmm. too. Because it develops a love for the Quran. For sure. At the end of the day, you're not here to memorize a book. You're not memorizing 
an economics textbook here. Yeah, you're memorizing mm. the Quran. Mm. And you you want to develop love mm. for it too no. and understand it through no. the book. No. And that will come through the mercy. That will come through the Allah. Where do you suggest you start? Because it can be quite overwhelming seeing the Quran six hundred four pages mm. long. How did you develop that love, that connection to it? That you were doing it almost out of your free will. That you enjoyed reciting it. Any tips that you have for? Um, I used to listen to the Quran very often. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Came from an environment where when we're on long journeys in the cars, Quran is being played, yes. stuff like that. And that yes. the yes. are like car mm. reciters, yes. I like to say, Muhammad al Haydan. Sheikh or Kashi Kamani. Yeah, yeah. you're driving fast and Muhammad al Haydan does a madud. <laughs> it really does sound nice. But, um, Alhamdulillah, so um, you have to make the Quran part of your life. Mm. Listening to the Quran, mm. reading it, and also reading the meanings too, because yes. some of the ayat are so profound. Um, and they can have impacts on your daily life. Sure. You may encounter something and then it reminds you of that ayah and it hits hard. Sure. Like, your Lord never forgets. Allah Allah. Sometimes when you're going through struggles or tribulations, your Lord never forgets. Or when once you've done something wrong, your Lord never forgets. Mm-hmm. And it keeps you on check. Mm-hmm. So that's why memorizing the Quran and also. Uh, knowing some of the translations yes. is very important. Yes. When you're in sure. Salah, mm. Maghrib Salah, Aisha Salah, even Taraweeh, mm. you don't want to just be standing there mm. just like that. Yeah. Then your mind wanders. Yeah. If you understand some of the meanings, yes. um, it really helps develop that love for the Quran. Mm. And certain reciters, they've got that, mashallah, innate ability to uh, recite in yeah, such an impactful yeah. and emotional mm. way. And it does hit hard mm. even more. Even starting with the small swords, understanding the small swords in the beginning. You recite and say, Allah, that's the only surah you know. Or you recite in Surah Al-Fatiha, that's the only surah you know. Or you begin to memorize Surah Al-Fatiha. Understand the meaning of that. Do they not ponder over the Qur'an? Or are there locks, are there seals upon their heart? Mm-hmm. So just starting with the small surahs, and even if it's just going, going on YouTube, simple search up, you know, Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah Al-Fatiha, with the English translation. Mm-hmm. Allah was summoned. What does a summon mean? Yeah. The independent. Allah is the independent. Surah Al-Ikhlas is a, a third of the Qur'an. Yeah. Why is it a third of the Qur'an? Because it encompasses the attributes of Allah, Tawheed, the concept of oneness of Allah. If you want to begin your love for the Qur'an, mm-hmm. it needs to extend beyond just reading it, but also understanding it. Yeah, and it extends to companionship too, because um, your friends, you need people to motivate you. Mm-hmm. Being competitive, fastabi qul khayran, race towards good. So having these Qur'an competitions, mm-hmm. uh, being together, asking how much did you do today, how much have you revised this, have you revised that, it keeps you in check mm-hmm. and it really motivates you. Yes. And that, I think that's a really ben- big benefit that I had from my mm-hmm. uh, secondary school and my primary school. Because we had, we had Qur'an classes, mm-hmm. and we had like, uh, class one, class two, and we had, we had peers, partners. Mm-hmm. Some of us had new 15 juz, 15 juz, mashallah. and it was, it was, it was a race. Yeah. Obviously it's not about like, who finished first, like, you got an award or something. However, we're racing towards good, yes. and it helps you and it keeps you in check. Competitive yes. element is very important. Very important. Don't begin this journey isolated. Yeah. Because yeah. the shaitan attacks a lone wolf. That's isn't correct. It? That's correct. So, like you said, righteous, righteous companion is so important. And what about the Qiyamah about yeah. righteous companionship? What's said about that? Because the journey of Hef is not going to be yeah. organic. Linear slot, linear slot, no, 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 yeah, exactly. Like that. There's gonna be dips, yes, especially when you get to the midpoint. I think a lot of far they go through is 50 after 15 juz, like oh, I have to do this again, and the shaitan comes to you like 15 like, juz. I remember when I got to my 15th juz, my teacher made me do those 15 juz again mm-hmm. as a revision mm-hmm. because he said it's not good enough, and that really does hit you like, oh, again, how am I gonna mm-hmm. There's another 15 I have to do, but you have to keep at it, yeah. If you don't keep at it, then the shaitan will come. And having those friends and companions with you who may have already done that mm. or who are doing that with you, you don't feel isolated. Yeah. And you're encouraged to continue because at the end of the day, you remember and they give you reminders like mm. at the end of the day, we're doing this to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to make a status for ourselves. No. Not to make us known as reciters. Mm. Not to make us mm. known as qari mu'ad, qari this, mm. qari that. No, no. At the end of the day, it's to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to get reward for every lecture that we recite. As we know from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Alif Lam Mim Each letter is yeah, Alif Lam Mim That 30 hasanat You mentioned as well The intention is so important Because Allah is one ثُمَّ أَوْرَثْنَا الْكِتَابِ الَّذِينَ اصْطَفَيْنَا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا And Surah Fatih Allah says Then we cause to inherit the book Meaning Allah decides who inherits the book from mankind yeah. It's not a decision Oh you know what One day I'm going to wake up I'm going to memorize the book Not necessarily Allah If he wants to He can take you off that path He can divert you off yeah. Attaining these statuses of Hafiz and Shaheed and Siddiq, all of them, you're selected by Allah. So you have to come with the characteristics, and if you don't come with the pure intention, ikhlas, mm-hmm. sincerity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's going to give you a reward here, the praise of the people.
Hello. And also, does that mean renewing? Was that just something you said at the beginning? And renewing, obviously. Um, yeah. Because in the beginning of the journey, you may not be so proficient with saying the Quran. Uh, your voice might not be mm. of that level, and then sure. after that, you learn to read rules, mm. you learn this, you learn that, mm. and you start imitating a reciter, and then people call you um, all kinds of names, and they give you some titles, and that can that can cause kind of sense of kibble in your heart, and you have to really be focused. Kibble meaning arrogant. Yeah, arrogant. Yeah. You have to ensure that mm. that doesn't get to you too much, mm. otherwise uh, it can be really detrimental, and you can yeah. it. Oh. And then your rewards. No. At the end of the day, we're doing this for the reward to please yeah. Allah Subhanahu yeah. wa Taala. Yeah. And if you're doing it for the fame or to become the next TikTok reciter, you might get the praise in this dunya, but what about the akhirah? Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we make their deeds like dust or ash yeah. scattered in the wind. wind. Yeah. And if you can picture that, you know, I don't know if you've had a campfire before, you sat around the campfire and after it dwindles out and it's just ash left it. When it gets windy, that's gone. It's light. It just disappears into the wind. Allah, so many rewards are gone. Allah, you come on, the mountain is bored, and then Allah causes it to go with the wind because you've done it for someone else. Yes, yeah. but you can't get to, mm. especially in our age, we've got Instagram, TikTok, someone just posts a recipe with themselves. Yes, for sure. Then the lights come, the red, red color. The red color? Yeah. The red color. Red, red color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, alhamdulillah. That's why when we've got good companions, you've got good teachers, mm. uh, and sometimes they don't let you to participate in certain competitions when they notice certain stuff. So that's, that's another important benefit of having teachers. They look over your well-being too. Yes. Not only whether you've got well-being over your Quran, but also whether you're conducting yourself in the correct way. Mm. Because there's so many hafal out there, or there may be so many people who learn the Quran, but they're not acting upon it. And that's the biggest thing, and that's the most, mm. that's the hardest bit. Like, at the end of the times, there's a hadith and there's a athar mm. narrating that there will be more reciters, but the fuqaha, would be less mm. the ones who understand the Quran, the ones who teach the Quran, they're gonna be less mm. because even reading from the Quran yeah. itself, the Mushaf, mm. or listening to only record, you mm. don't pick up on those small mm. nuances. Yes. That's why you need a teacher. Uh, how can one memorize in London when they're trying to aspire? Can can they get good grades in the GCSEs? Can they get good grades in the A levels? Can they get into a good career? Does the Quran prevent that, or does it help with that, or can can it be done alongside each other? Or do you need to dedicate two years in Egypt? I'm not think... specifically saying. <laughs> yeah. Aiming at you, no shots fired, but no. I think it definitely helps. Mm. It helps with your academics because memorizing the Quran takes something very important dedication. When you're doing your GCC revision or A level revision, you need to dedicate hours at times, yeah? Um, and if you memorize the Quran, you usually you've got a set routine, you're doing this one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening. And once you've got that dedication, you can adapt that mm-hmm. to your studies. Now, a lot of people, when they memorize the Quran, um, they're also using different techniques. It's not also it's not only about reading, it's about listening. So you're memorizing via listening and reading. Listening so powerful. Yeah, very powerful. And also you recite it. So you're speaking it too. The words are coming out of your mm-hmm. mouth. Mm-hmm. And that also helps with memorization. For sure. Get the photographic memory, also the audio type memory. So and if you want to go further like the Muslims, like the Moroccans, you write, write it. Were there any low parts in your journey? How did you how did you bounce back? There was a lot of low parts, especially 15th Juz, I remember mm. uh, it got to a stage where once you get to that, the middle part, it's like you have to do this again. And, but you don't realise that you've become more proficient and efficient, mm. as you said. So now the journey actually gets easier, mm. but the shaitan comes here and says, you have to do all of this again. And, the, and that took those first 15 Juz took you like five years or something like that. You have to do another five years. But the reality is you've become more efficient and uh, you've, got, you've built better techniques. Mm-hmm. Now you know yourself better, mm-hmm. you know what works for you, mm-hmm. um, and that helps. Mm-hmm. So, that was the biggest um, obstacle mm-hmm. I faced, 15th Jud. Um, but after that, alhamdulillah, it got easier. I don't think there was any other difficulties, mm-hmm. large difficulties. Of mm-hmm. course, it's every day sometimes mm-hmm. one surah is hard, one surah is easy. But also, that reminds me of something. Okay. Um, some people, they say that like, this surah is hard, this one's hard, mm-hmm. this one's easy. Like, don't listen to that. Like, honestly, don't listen to that because mm. every single person's mind is completely different. I'll give you an example. I find Surah Rahman incredibly hard. And a lot of people, they may hear this, might start laughing because Surah Rahman is meant to be easy. Like, to be fair, I find it hard too. <laughs> I find it really I'm with hard. You, I'm with you, I'm in the same boat. I find it really hard. Um, so everyone finds their own stuff difficult and some Surah is easy. So, like, just listen to people saying, oh, this is hard, you won't be able to do it. Like, you have to put extra hours. Just put a positive spin on that. Yeah. The fact that you find the Surah hard might be Allah's way of keeping you connected to the Qur'an. Because you're reading it more. Because you're reading it more. Yeah. Trying to live like because I remember this uh, page in Surah Tawbah. I found it incredibly difficult. There are some hard pages yeah, in Surah Tawbah. Yeah, sure. Surah Tawbah. And I remember my teacher keeping me back in lunchtime. 
and I was still not getting it. Day, like that whole day, I came to him in lesson time, lunch time, off school. I was still making mistakes. I just couldn't get it. I put so much effort into it. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, the next day I got it. Like, completely, zero oh. mistakes. Alhamdulillah. Until this day, that page, like, I know it's solid here. Yeah. There's times you're going to be down in the trenches, man. Mm-hmm. Really? And there were some surahs that are hard, and I, I think a lot of people can relate. Surah in Juz'amma, sorry. Surah in Bayna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still revise that to this day. Yeah, subhanAllah. Subhanallah. But, and surahs in Jinn, for example, I vividly remember that at the time. I don't find it that difficult. I was stuck in that surah. And and honestly, there will be times, not just that, throughout the Quran, there's tough parts. Surah in Nisa, the ayah is about inheritance. You'll see come Allah. You'll see come Allah. and you, hopefully someone else takes up the tarawih. You know, like. <laughs> yeah. Turn to your favorite ayahs, though. Hmm? Turn to your favorite yeah, ayahs. Yeah, they though. can. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Especially when you start studying the heavens. Yeah, like, yeah. Allah, it opens your eyes. Yeah, yeah. Even the like, ayahs, Allah mm. Allah 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 But it sounds so flowy once you memorize it. Yes. Like, that's yes. when you get to the blessings of it and the yes. delights of yes. it. Memorize it. So increases your connection, increases your strength in the Quran. Subhanallah. And there's a few points I want to touch upon, inshallah. Before that. I think maybe inshallah, just a short Quran citation, a few ayahs of your choice, maybe for some of the favorite ayahs you like. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem Inna ashaab al-jannati al-yawma fi shughulim fakihoon Hum wa azwajuhum fi ghilalin ala You're not fulfilling all the conditions. What's your advice? I think that's the opposite. If you've sinned, 
you replace it with good. In the hasanat, you the hibla sayyat. If you've um, if you've sinned, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean you stop reciting the Quran or you stop this or you stop that journey, because mm-hmm. you should be um, increasing your rewards. Mm-hmm. So they wipe out those bad sins. Mm-hmm. And as Allah subhanahu wa taala also says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً when they, do, do, when they do bad immorality, ذَكَرُوا mm-hmm. اللَّهَ they remember Allah subhanahu wa taala. I.e. through the Quran, فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ mm-hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives their sins. Mm-hmm. وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَى اللَّهِ And who can forgive sins except Allah mm-hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala? Mm-hmm. And that's what it comes down to. No one else has the ability to forgive mm-hmm. sins except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's the best way to reconnect with him except by Quran or salat? Mm-hmm. As long as you're in the dunya, the shaitan is going to try and trap you. They're never going to be safe. It's very easy, very easy. Especially mm-hmm. when you see others who are not memorizing the Quran. And then they're spending their hours watching football. So you have to make sacrifices. At the end of the day, if you want to achieve something, yes. you have to make sacrifices. For sure. For sure. Um, and sometimes sure. you have a you you have a Quran lesson, and at the same time England's playing in the semi final. Yeah. That type of stuff. I can't I can't relate by the way. I don't watch football. <laughs> especially when you're young. Yeah. Especially when you're young. Mm. Now when you get older, like you miss what match of football. It's not that. It's not that. It's not a big problem. But when you're young, and you see your other friends, maybe you're in a state school, and you see others watching this, doing that, you have to resist it. Mm. Even, there's a lot of temptation, if you go to state schools or you go to even normal Islamic schools, people listen to music. Um, and if you want to stay upon that path of memorizing the Quran with the correct intention, and also you want to see results, then you have to abstain from a lot of these um, if and a lot of these fitan. And it's hard, it's difficult. We live in an era of social media where it can come into your house. You don't need to go out the streets, it'll come yes. to you. It's right here. Allah, Allah, so, true. so we have to Allah, be really vigilant. It's trade-offs, like you mentioned. Mm. It's trade-offs. With anything, with anything worth having, you're gonna have to trade off something. And and obviously, when you're young, it's always hard to see a long-term thing. That's yeah. why one of the seven shades under the throne of Allah is a young person, yeah. specifically a young person whose heart was attached to the Masjid. Because it's always harder when you're young, to because when you're older, you've already kind of you already experienced certain things. Yeah. So certain things don't distract you anymore. It's just you consider it almost lame, as you can say. Exactly. Right? So once you're older, you realize that you don't regret a heartbeat. That you spent memorizing the Quran, because every single heartbeat, every single recitation, every, even the struggle. Like you know the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he says the person who recites and he's reciting when, when he's attacked, yeah, he's struggling. While he's struggling. Yeah. His, his reward is too. So there's a reward for that too. So, Subhanallah, the religion is very merciful. It's been, facilita- it's been facilitated in a way where gives um, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. I think we spoke about Subhanallah. A lot of a lot of uh, gems will take from this episode, and I hope Inshallah the people. Are, Watching this benefits, inshallah. And also, what I want to do, inshallah, is the style of the podcast. I want to end it with a nice quick, quick fire questions, yeah? yeah inshallah. So, like, so not so much reflection, but like, what was quick fire, yeah, yeah? Three of your top resizes. Okay, already starting off, and I think I'm going to cheat in this one. <laughs> okay, go on. So, Sheikh Yasser Dosiri, 2003 era. Sheikh Yasser Dosiri, 2008 oh, era. Okay. And finally, Sheikh Yasser Dosiri currently. No, I'm not cheating on that one. However, okay, I'll have to give honorable mention. Sheikh Balila. Balila. Excellent reciter. Muhammad Balila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's... These are some of the other reciters. Nasr al Qatami. Allah. Ahmed the Face. Yes. Beautiful reciters, alhamdulillah. There's a four. There's quite a few. We'll allow you. What is your favorite surah? Surah Isra. First surah that you memorize apart from Surah Al Fatiha. I guess it was Surah Khlas. Okay, yeah, I guess that's probably the more logical answer to give. First, A, that you. Sort of memorize, which kind of increased your love, which made you fall in love with the Quran. Like you really kind of learn about the meaning of it. You're like, wow. الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن الذين آمنوا those who believe وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله and their hearts find rest um, in the remembrance of Allah ألا بذكر الله تطمئن قلوب verily in the remembrance of the Quran verily in the remembrance of Allah أي the Quran the hearts find tranquility. Yes. That really hit the heart. Love that. That's 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 yeah. powerful. Uh, what what about your favorite ayah now? Come favorite ayah now. Favorite ayah now. Uh, off the top, <laughs> off the top, off the top. Let's go quick. Surah Sajda. Surah Sajda. Uh, I forgot. The Jannah and Jannah. No, no, no. Off it. فلا تعلم نفس ما أخفي لهم من قوة أعين جزاء بما كانوا يعملون. So فلا تعلم نفس ما أخفي. So people do not know what's hidden of them or delights. For what they used to do as a reward for what they used to work for. Wow. It's a massive change of topic. Favorite sport? <laughs> oh, football. football. Football, yeah? I'm not really a sporty person. Well, okay, fair enough. Like, I used to watch it a lot, not anymore. Don't play anymore. Really, the stress comes in. What's favorite food? Uh, favorite food? 
oh, I was dreading a question like this because I'm in fact a very picky eater. I'm not proud about it because ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمِ لِلَنَّهِ You'll be asked about this nights. I'm a really picky eater. Nothing to be proud of. So can we skip this question? <laughs> okay, it's not too. Favourite or best country you've travelled to? Egypt. Best live recitation you've listened to? You've been in a moment, you've prayed behind someone. What's the best live recitation you've listened to? Maybe mention the name, what's all that? I'm not sure if I can mention the name. Okay, okay, sure. One of my sixth form friends. I think you know who I'm talking about. Okay, I'm not sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Dude, I can't okay. really mention the name. That's, that's fine, inshallah. We might have him run in the future. Inshallah, let's see what we can do, inshallah. If there's one Sheikh you'd love to meet, and this can be from the past, actually, who would it be? Sheikh ibn Uthaymiyyah rahimahullah. You know when you uh, listen to some of the talks, yeah, and you realize that, what's it called? It makes sense. The deen makes sense. You take so many benefits. And the Sheikh had so much knowledge. Um, and the way he used to speak, even he had this video out there where he's speaking to just a group of youngsters, youth. And it was really heartwarming seeing that. Uh, if it was possible to meet him, subhanAllah, that would be really amazing. Rahimullah, may Allah. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's, that's beautiful, subhanAllah. And any, any Sheikh currently that you love to meet? Sheikh Sahih Fawzan. Okay. For a similar reason, too, yeah. because like, we well, here in the UK, yeah. um, oh. a lot of the time we're spending like on our academics and stuff like that, but when you get home after school, you might watch a video of Sheikh Sahih Fawzan or another Sheikh, um, but you've never met them. But you've taken so much inspiration, you've learned so much from mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. It'd be sure. nice to meet them, inshallah, one day. Inshallah. May Allah give you that opportunity. I mean, I mean, I mean. SubhanAllah, it's been an amazing, amazing point. And you know the time's flown, SubhanAllah. Um, and the Ibn Lahi Ta'ala, may Allah make this a sincere uh, initiative. Salaqah Jaliya, inshallah. And I hope the Ibn Lahi take a motivation from this. If you have any questions, by the way, you can leave them in the comments, inshallah. And I'm sure you'll be watching the, the video back, inshallah. If any directed yeah. towards him, you'll answer them, inshallah. inshallah. Any directed in general to the podcast or me, inshallah, you feel free to ask, inshallah. There's also a Telegram group that you can join for the citation for them. And benefits we do share, and also an Instagram page. A lot of benefits are shared in there, alhamdulillah. Um, just to summarize, inshallah, we spoke about the Quran journey. Yeah. Consistency, very also cool. we speak about the importance of having a teacher. And above all knowledge, someone who knows more. Allah, There has to be that element of humility yes. too. Humility. When you learn the Quran, subhanAllah. It's heavy, it's heavy. That reminds me of the, the lines of poetry by Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah. He spoke to his teacher, Waqiyah. Yeah, yeah. And he complained to Waqiyah about his lack of knowledge. He said, or, or, his, or his lack of mem- ability to memorize. He said, Shakeltu ila Waqiyah, so ahifu. I complained to my teacher, Waqiyah, about my weak memory. And even though they had a strong memory, yeah, yeah, yeah. they strong. They're other weak. It's photographic. <laughs> photographic memory. Yes. Felt shed the ila talk in my house. Leave off bad days. Muqala bi anna al-ilma nurun that knowledge is light. Yeah. Wa nurul Allahi and the light of Allah being the Quran. Yeah. Being being the same knowledge. La yuta wa alsi don't give it to a sinner. Subhanallah. It's not given to someone who excessively sins and just thinks that's fine to continue with. It's yeah. not gonna. It's gonna affect your memory. I remind you of something. Um, first year of sixth form. Yeah. Um, so this was the year twelve. Yeah. New to a sixth form, mm-hmm. never been to a state school. Got home, had my Quran lesson, and I made so many mistakes. And my teacher said that same, um, oh, well, same lines of poetry. <laughs> and in my mind, I'm thinking, if he knew it's my first year of sixth form, is this fitna or something like that? You, you go through trials and stuff mm-hmm. like that, but that's part of the development. And alhamdulillah, if you've got the Quran, if the Quran is a companion for you, that will guide you. So that's, I'm going to speak about some more <laughs> Every time, subhanAllah, the Quran, it's an ocean. No matter how deep, how many times the diver goes in, he never, he never reaches yeah. the bottom, subhanAllah. The Qur'an is either, either witness for you or against you. Be a companion of it in this life. It will be a companion of you within the grave. And it will take you ultimately all the way to Jannah. Recite and ascend. And recite just as you recited in the dunya. We hope, inshallah, that the views at home have benefited, inshallah. And bi ta'ala, we will look forward to seeing you on future podcasts. bi ta'ala, with sure. various guests, inshallah, unwrapping their journey with the Qur'an. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdika. Shadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfirullah wa natubu alayhi. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وسباقنا ضم المتون بشأنها ما خاب عبد باذل سباق فتجمعوا لتنافس بكتابنا إن اجتماع الخير